Do you remember the 1995 MTV Video Music Awards? Because they were a hot mess. It's um, it's also... Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Just like my previous videos, I've been going back and covering the most messy and chaotic award shows, and the 1995 VMAs are no exception. Before I hop into this hot mess, I want to take the opportunity to say that a lot of you have still chosen to not subscribe to me. Let's change that. Okay, let's start with the pre-show because a lot happened. The pre-show starts with Kurt addressing the death of the Grateful Dead guitarist Jerry Garcia. Kurt interviews Bob Weir who addresses how he has been dealing with the news. I never really expected him to outlive me or nothing like that. We then get a musical performance by Silverchair doing Tomorrow. On the marquee, when it's in New York, it's always on the marquee. We then get an interview with Alanis Morissette who is set to release a new music video for Hand In My Pocket. And you've got a new video out on MTV called Hand In My Pocket. Right, we just shot it in Brooklyn. It'll be, uh, I'd say, be ready in, within a week or two. Interesting how quick the turnaround is for a music video. It was filmed and released within the span of like two weeks. We then get an interview with Claire Danes who explains Hollywood in 10 seconds. Well, I'm friends with Anona whose boyfriend is Dave and I, the director is the husband of a director that both Anona and I worked with. So it was kind of an intertwined thing. Tabitha Sarin then talks to R.E.M. Michael had recently gone through surgery and asks Tabitha if she wants to see his scar. And let's just say he shows too much much for me to show on YouTube. You okay, you can put that up now. <laughs> Peter then says this. I decided that I'm gonna postpone my sex change until after the tour. Okay. So there's gonna be no surgery until it's over. Okay. We then get an interview with Slash who talks about the drama that was in the band around this time. The Guns N' Roses thing is we're just trying to get it together. You know, trying to uh, get the wheels turning so that we can get a record done and go back and, and do what we do. We then get to follow Tabitha Soren behind the scenes of Mariah Carey filming her new music video for her lead single of her upcoming album Daydream, the iconic and probably my favorite Mariah song, Fantasy. But the ODB remix is better. The music video is filmed at an amusement park and Tabitha and Mariah ride the same roller coaster that was featured in the music video. <laughs> Tabitha starts talking about being a little worried about the safety of the roller coaster, and I'm getting vibes that Mariah is tolerating her. This looks a little rickety, but I'm putting my life in your hands. Okay. Okay. You'll be fine. And she's gonna have to tolerate her a lot more in the upcoming years. Every time I deal with you, it is a nightmare. We then get to see the premiere of the music video before the single has even been released. What I would do to hear this song for the first time again. 10 out of 10 perfection. Tabitha addresses how it is a big year for music releases, but Mariah Carey is not worried. How do you feel about um, having your record come out at the same time as these other amazing pop divas? Um, what was that big sigh for? No, I'm just thinking about it. I really, I, I haven't really paid that much attention to it, and I think that there's room for everybody. And she shouldn't be, because it was number one after number one, including the longest running number one single with One Sweet Day, until it was beaten by Old Town Road. We then get another performance by Silverchair, who do Pure Massacre, and at the end of the song, they play the guitars and then leave them by the amps, which causes a ton of playback. But you did this for what? Why not? Why? Why not? <laughs> Why though? We then get to the main show, which starts off with a humongous 15 minute performance by Michael Jackson. He does a medley of his biggest hits, but instead of me going through an entire list of all of the songs that he did, this is a good opportunity to say that I've created a Spotify and Apple Music playlist of all of the songs that were either nominated or featured within this year's awards. Links are in the bio, go take a listen. It was a fantastic showcase of how to do a live performance. There was vocals. Well, they were lip synced, but the, the vocals were somewhere. There was great choreography, costuming, stage effects. I mean, sparks were flying out of a dancer's back. That's art. He then adds in Janet Jackson's best interlude, Let's Dance. Get the point? Good. Let's dance. 
Since 1993, Michael Jackson has been accused of a lot, easily accessible on the internet. However, this performance seemed like somewhat of a return to form for Michael Jackson after several years of bad press. This performance is showing everyone that he is the king of pop, look how many hits he has under his belt, he is super talented and continues to be. The performance then ends with Michael hugging some children and then there is a shot of his wife at the time, Lisa Marie Presley, in the audience clapping. Very intentional. The host of this year's awards, Dennis Miller, then comes out to the stage to do a quick monologue. He makes this joke about White Zombie. feel pretty uplifted tonight. I was just backstage participating in a prayer circle with the guys from White Zombie. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure which side we were praying to. Uh, he then discusses the recent discourse around the upcoming 1996 election nominee, Bob Dole. Dole uh, recently blasted Time Warner Records for the ills of society because they release albums with crude lyrics. He then went on to blame global warming on the AIDS quilt. He then talks about Congress. But remember, yours is the generation that must not be sucked in by the rantings and ravings of Congress, a group of petty derisive, embittered old white men whose prostates have atrophied into jujubes. Wow, the US Congress has really changed a lot since 1995. Was that good? Okay. Dennison makes this joke about Mark Furman, a detective on the O.J. Simpson trial that was found to have an old German medal from a particular time period that I'm sure you can read between the lines. Matter of fact, I get the feeling if Newt Gingrich were here tonight, he'd be on the run like Mark Furman at the Apollo Theater. For those that do not understand the connection to the Apollo Theater, after doing some research, it has a rich Jewish history. Dennison continues to talk about Mark Furman, bringing up the tapes where he was found to be recorded saying racist and misogynistic slurs. See on those tapes he said if you're a cop in LA you're like God. That very well might be true Marky because you my friend are about to be crucified. Rod Stewart then comes out to the stage to present the award for best male video. Rod laughs at the line that has been written for him to say. I'm proud to announce that this year we males have made great strides. Right the nominees are Chris Isaac, Somebody's Crying, Elton John, Believe, Lucas, Lucas with the Lid Off, and Tom Petty, You Don't Know How It Feels. Tom Petty wins. Tim Robinson comes out to the stage and wants to say something to his kids watching at home. Tonight's a special night. I want you to stay up as late as you possibly can. Turn up the volume on the television very, very, very loud. Press your faces up against the glass of the TV and give it up for live! He then introduces live doing a performance of I Alone. Patrick Swayze and Wesley Snipes from the movie Tu Wong Fu then come out to the stage to present the award for best video from a film. The nominees are Brian Adams, Have You Ever Really Loved a Woman from Don Juan DeMarco, Jim Carrey, Cuban Pete from The Mask, Seal, Kiss from a Rose from Batman Forever, You Too, Hold On, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me from Batman Forever, and Urge Overkill, Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon from Pulp Fiction. Big movies! Big movies! Seal wins. <laughs> Bill Bellamy and Monica Sellers then come out to present the nominees for viewers' choice. The nominees are Green Day, Basket Case, Hootie and the Blowfish, Hold My Hand, Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson, Scream, Live, Lightning Crashes, REM, What's the Frequency, Kenneth, and TLC, Waterfalls. Dennison makes this joke about Senator Bob Packwood. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lot of dignitaries here tonight. I'd like to introduce one in the crowd. Please welcome Senator Bob Packwood. Senator Bob Packwood. Actually, that's Babe. For context, Packwood resigned from the Senate after threat of expulsion after allegations of schmechual schmashmashment. Lenny Kravitz and Cheryl Crow then come out to the stage to present the award for best new artist in a video. Cheryl Crow has something to say. But our nominees did it by overcoming a lot of obstacles. Our nominees Well, like are... waiting tables for years, not getting paid, and serving your demo at dessert time, and just hoping that you're... Our nominees... Oh, sorry. Well, are... and there's long hours and sleazy bars and... 
shootout match is bad to get paid and sleazy agents and... Cheryl, Cheryl, take it easy. You made it already, babe. Oh, sorry. The nominees are Jeff Buckley, Last Goodbye, Desiree, You Gotta Be, Filter, Hey Man, Nice Shot, Hootie and the Blowfish, Hold My Hand, and Portishead, Sour Times, Nobody Loves Me. Hootie and the Blowfish win. We then get a performance by TLC that do a medley of songs from Crazy Schmexy Cool, except not really because they perform Ain't Too Proud to Beg, but the rest of the songs they do are Kick Your Game, Creep, and of course, Waterfalls. Legends, babe. Absolute legends. <laughs> the man that loves to sweat it out, Rudy Giuliani and First Lady Donna Hanover Giuliani talk about New York City. Yeah. Heading into the commercial break, we get a parody of the infamous Calvin Klein ads, except this time Beavis and Butthead are behind the camera. And do you know what ladders are made of? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and what would that be? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> These ads were so controversial that it prompted an investigation into whether any of the models in the ads were underage and whether they violated any cheese pizza laws. What's your name? Brandon. How old are you? 20. Where are you from? Kentucky. But what kind of jeans are those? Calvin Klein. Do you like them? Yeah, they're comfortable. They're like... I don't know, they're comfortable. You ride horses in them? It's getting weird. But for the record, the investigation was dropped because it was found that every model in the ad was an adult. The infamous Big and Bill Bellamy then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Dance Video. The nominees are the almost executive producer of the Bratz movie, Paula Abdul, My Love Is For Real. Where's God when you need him? Because this does not make any sense. Uh, I mean, I asked it to executive produce, choreograph, design the clothing, and dolls for the Bratz movie. CC Music Factory, Do You Want to Get Funky, Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson, Scream, Montel Jordan, This Is How We Do It, Madonna, Human Nature, and Salt and Pepper, None of Your Business. Manjo B. Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson went for Scream. This has been said to be the most expensive music video of all time. However, the director of the music video, Mark Romanek, has claimed otherwise. However, when you Google what is the most expensive music video to ever be made, Scream comes up. So either way, it's expensive. It costs $7 million to make in today's currency. It would be 13 million USD. While Janet is walking up to the stage, you can see that she is wearing a shirt that reads Pervert 2. Getting a little scholarly, according to the 2003 book Michael Jackson, The Solo Years by Craig Halstead and Chris Cadman, Janet caused a stir by wearing a t-shirt with Pervert 2 embroidered on it her way of showing support for Michael. I had it made especially, she told reporters. People can draw their own conclusions, which is precisely what many people did wrongly. I mean, in the context of Latoya Jackson coming out against her brother in 1993, Janet's shirt could have easily been misunderstood. During the acceptance speech, Michael says this. My favorite thing about doing this screen video is it was really an excuse to work with my sister Janet. Kevin Bacon and Liv Tyler then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Direction in a Video. The nominees are Scream, directed by Mark Romanek, Waterfalls, directed by F. Gary Gray, Buddy Holly, directed by Spike Jones, and Basket Case, directed by Mark Kaur. Spike Jones wins for Buddy Holly. Grant Hill and Ricky Lake then come out to the stage and they do a bit where they pretend to be on an episode of Ricky Lake's show, Ricky Lake. A lady in the audience has a question for Grant, which turns out not to be a question. Listen, Mr. Basketball Man. Hey, excuse me? Hey, don't even go there, okay? No, excuse me? You may think you are all of that, but if I ever caught you on my sofa at three o'clock in the morning in those short, Coochie cut a basketball pants. I'd pattern your butt with my size 12 pump. Well, Grant, how does that make you feel? She's right. I'm living a lie. Can I have a tissue? They then present the award for best R&B video. The nominees are Boys to Men, Water Runs Dry, Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson, Scream, Jade, 
five, four, three, two, yo. Time is up. Montel Jordan, this is how we do it. And TLC Waterfalls. TLC wins and they read out their acceptance speech from a roll of toilet paper. Now this was perfect shade to put the people that they wanted to thanks names on the roll of toilet paper because people's names on toilet paper. What else do you put on toilet paper? Shaka Khan. Considering all of the struggles that TLC was going through around this time, reading out a bunch of people's names on a roll of toilet paper was the perfect amount of professionalism mixed with shade. TLC then says this. To the person who thinks she deserves the most thanks anyway. Pebble. <laughs> Shade! For those that do not know, Pebbles was TLC's manager, and let's just say she was not the best. In 1995, TLC filed for bankruptcy in due part to Pebbles' poor management of the group's funds. Basically, unjust enrichment was happening. They were making a bunch of money, yet they were only walking away with roughly $50,000 each a year. Now, hopefully that explains my 1999 VMA joke. T-Balls are still paid dust. I mean, they were all paid dust, but... Oh. <laughs> Natalie Merchant then comes out to the stage to introduce R.E.M. doing a performance of The Wake Up Bomb. Kennedy and Claire Danes then talk about the viewers' choice voting, but right before they do, Kennedy is seen trying to flirt with someone in the audience like Austin Powers. Hello, darling. Madonna then comes out to the stage, but I'll cue you into some BTS drama that I was having while making this video. Basically, the video and the audio kept on going out of sync with each other like every 30 seconds, so I had to spend a long, long time syncing it up. It was very annoying, but there was one out of sync moment that did make me laugh. As Madonna is walking to the stage, the audio is still playing music from an ad from the commercial break, so we get this. Madonna then makes the second Bob Dole joke of the night. Bob Dole is sorry he couldn't be here tonight to give the award away for the best rap video. So I'll be speaking on his behalf. She then presents the award for best rap video. The nominees are Brandy featuring MC Light, Queen Latifah and Yo-Yo, I Wanna Be Down, The Bush Babies, We Remember, Dr. Dre, Did Somebody Say, Skip. Keep their heads ringing. Craig Mack, Flavor In Your Ear, Public Enemy, Give It Up, and Rappin' Forte featuring The Spinners, I'll Be Around. Dr. Dre wins and while he is giving his acceptance speech, Madonna is in the background rebooting. Planning for going through hell to put it together. Yeah, before we go, I gotta say something to everybody out there trying to shut down hip hop. It's not happening. We're gonna be here. Mike Tyson then comes out to the stage to introduce the Red Hot Chili Peppers doing a performance of Warped. During their performance, it keeps on going into black and white and back into color. Am I missing something? After their performance, Dennis says this. Hey kids, don't, don't let Flea upset you when he gives you the finger. Flea is just remorseful because he has such a small stinger, you know. We then get a performance by Bon Jovi doing Helter Skelter and Something for the Pain live from Times Square. Dennis then introduces the next presenter by saying this. The always charming and frequently topless Drew Barrymore, Drew! He is referencing Drew posing in Playboy back in January, as well as flashing on David Letterman. Drew Barrymore then presents the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award to R.E.M. We've made a whole lot of videos that don't, you know, don't suck. <laughs> we then get a performance by Alanis Morissette doing You Ought to Know. Seal and Desiree then come out to the stage to introduce the International Viewers Choice Award winners, and after the winners are shown, Dennis Miller says this. <laughs> yeah, we'd, uh, we'd like to say hi to all the kids around the world, and some of you have incredibly... Uh, I can't completely make out what he is saying, but contextually... It's getting weird. We then get a performance by Hootie and the Blowfish doing Only Wanna Be With You. Halfway through the performance, they say this. We'd like to drink this to R.E.M. because it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be a band and this is for them. Dennis then introduces the next presenter to the stage by saying this. This next presenters, 
Currently seeing more ass than a rental car. Folks, George Clooney. George Clooney then presents the award for best female video. The nominees are Desiree, You Gotta Be, PJ Harvey, Down by the Water, Annie Lennox, No More I Love Yous, and Madonna, Take a Bow. Madonna wins and she says this. I guess this is the closest I'll get to George Clooney. Um she then gives us a little dance. Okay, there. I feel better. We then get a performance by Hole doing Violet. Courtney starts off the performance by saying this. For Kurt and Kristen and River and Joe and Rob and today Joni Abbott, this is for you. Hole then ends the performance by trashing the stage because they are rock chicks that just want to rock, rock out. It. Dennis reacts to the performance by saying this. Yeah, the pit was rocking during Hole. Let's all link nipple rings, do a human charm breast parade down into the West Village. Okay. He then introduces the next presenter by saying this. Our next presenter's list of soundtrack credits is longer than the DNA phase of the OJ trial. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Brian Adams. Brian Adams then presents the viewer's choice. TLC wins. We then get a performance by Green Day, live from Stockholm Syndrome, Sweden, doing Stuck With Me. Dennis Rodman rocking pre-euphoria, Gen Z, Instagram, baddie, couture, and Christopher Walken then come out to the stage to present the award for best alternative video. The nominees are The Cranberries, Zombie, Green Day, Basket Case, Hole, Doll Parts, Stone Temple Pilots, Interstate Love Song, and Weezer, Buddy Holly. Weezer wins, and only Matt and Brian are there. Where are the others? Dennison introduces Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston to the stage, and let's just say that Dennis was a Whitney Houston. All right, here to present the final award of the evening, a talented woman who is the embodiment of elegance, charm, and beauty. Come on, she's nice. I don't have to be a smart ass all the time. Here's it. Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Bobby Brown was kind of pressed like a panini that he was barely introduced. I thought I was going to have to have a fight with one of the announcers for not saying my name earlier, but um, thank you, Dennis. Say your name. <laughs> they then present the award for video of the year. The nominees are Green Day, Basket Case, Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson, Scream, TLC, Waterfalls and Weezer, Buddy Holly. I'll let Bobby and Whitney read out the winner because they were so excited. Ah! Interestingly enough, the award for breakout video was not shown tonight. It had the exact same nominees as the nominees for video of the year, which would make you think that Waterfalls would win, right? Well, not necessarily. Weezer's buddy Holly won Breakthrough Video, which just makes me think, what is the big technical difference between Breakthrough Video and Video of the Year? White Zombie then closes out the show by doing a performance of More Human Than Human. We then get to the post-show. Kurt and Tabitha talk about Janet Jackson's shirt. I'm wearing a shirt that said pervert on the back when she knew she was going to be spending so much time with her brother. I thought what that could was that sort mean? of He's puzzling, sure. to say the least. Who knows? Uh... But they did kiss and hug. You see, the interpretation of the shirt was not exactly what she wanted it to be. We then get a technical difficulty where we try to cut to an interview with TLC with Allison, but the mics are not working. The limo area, Allison, That's are you right. there? She's there, but she's We have, a, we have a little technical problem down there. Miss. We eventually cut back to the interview with TLC where Allison asks them this. All this energy would be because you won how many awards? Three. They actually won four. They are winning the IDGAF war. We then get to see L.A. Reid, the iconic X Factor season two judge. Yes, I know he does more than that. We then get this cringe-worthy interview with the Red Hot Chili Peppers who talk about Mike Tyson. Well, no, a lot of people think that uh, a lot of women really resent him and they think well, he's a he's a and that's, you know, they're definitely against him. So how, how do you balance well, those things out? I mean, whether he is a racist or not is debatable. Yeah, and debatable. If, he, if he was a racist, he did his time. And I think that he's obviously learned a lot of things because um, if you hear him speak, he's a very thoughtful, intelligent, sensitive man. Yeah. Like that thing he said in uh, Cincinnati when he was getting the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
Ultimately, their interview is less about them and more about talking about the interview with Madonna and Courtney Love that happened moments before. I'm assuming that happened during the commercial break. Now, they don't actually show the messy moments in this post show. They show it later on on MTV News and it is cinema. So let's start from the beginning. Kurt is interviewing Madonna about her upcoming compilation of ballads album, Something to Remember, and then all of a sudden, a makeup compact flies onto the platform inches away from Madonna's head. It's also... They both look down below to see where that came from. They both assume that it is some crazed fan that wants to get Madonna's attention, but instead, it's Courtney Love. Here is Tabitha's recounting of the event. Well, then you hear like this. A second makeup compact is then thrown, and then somehow a third compact is thrown. Courtney must have been trying to get rid of her Jaclyn Hill cosmetics. Kurt is then inviting Courtney up to the platform while Madonna is telling him not to. Come on up. <laughs> Should we let her come up? Yeah. No, don't, please. Come on, Courtney. After the fact, Kurt talks about how there was someone in his ear telling him to get Courtney up to the stage because it would be great television. I had somebody in my ear and I'm saying, get her up there. It's great television. You want Courtney to come up. You want them to like wrestle on the stage or something. Madonna then says this while Courtney is coming up to the stage. Courtney Love is in, de in dire need of attention right now. Is she She's throwing her compact at me. So Courtney comes running up the stairs and when MTV News plays this moment back, they add in horror movie music. They are so messy. Kurt then asks them both whether this is their first encounter, and Courtney instantly says this. Your first this encounter? Thing, you know? No, 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 we've no, talked. We've had a few encounters. I disagree with Ray and our guy a bit, but Alanis, there's some pipes. For those that do not know, Alanis Morissette was signed to Madonna's music label. Courtney then apologizes to Tabitha off camera. Sorry I insulted you. What? Yes, I was Kurt. in a bad mood. <laughs> but you said something mean about me that day. Probably not as mean as Barbara Walters. Are you a good mother? Yes. I'm an excellent mother. Ever do drugs in front of your child? My God. Courtney then starts talking about dating using a hospital analogy, basically saying that she needs to stop dating other rock stars. So, you know, I go out with the other surgeon, right? So, like, maybe I should try a candy striper. I think you should get out of the hospital. Which leads to this massive shade bomb by Madonna. No, man. I like it in here. Nice clothes, good money, <laughs> and a lot of available Courtney then gets off her stool, and in an attempt to show her love for Madonna, she brings up her movie Truth or Dare. I went to Truth or Dare with Kurt, and we were leaving, and he goes, That's you! She was trying to be self-deprecating, but at this point, Madonna had had enough, so someone from her team comes and pretends that she needs to be somewhere else. Right before leaving, Madonna gives Courtney a kiss goodbye. Well. Well, Courtney, thank you. Bye-bye. I like a good entrance. <laughs> <laughs> wow. When I first saw this clip, I thought that he was trying to say goodbye to Courtney and get her off the platform, but it was actually him talking to Madonna off camera. Well, Courtney, thank you. Bye-bye. Courtney and Tabitha then make amends with a big hug. No makeup, all right? Okay, I won't say anything mean about you again. Give me some right? <laughs> Courtney then talks about Ted Nugent. Well, he put, the first single was called Kiss My Ass, and he goes, Courtney Love, I've had your hole, which actually happens to be true. <laughs> <sighs> this is how MTV chose to report this moment after the fact. She fell off the stool and landed on her back with her legs facing the camera guys. Her legs are like wide open, they're all bruised and scarred and stuff. And the camera guys are just going, oh, oh my God. I mean, those two feet standing up in the air like, like these two chicken legs with heels on them, that was the most hilarious moment of all time. It was like a cartoon. <laughs> It's interesting how the media has labeled this interaction as a cat fight. This feels misogynistic. Like, besides a couple shady digs, this is not a cat fight. Anyhow, back to the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Anthony and Flea get into a brawl that is very real. I really, you know, Anthony really pisses me off. I don't like him, and his, I don't like his girlfriend, or his mother, or his dad, or his family. Oh no, you know, we, we had such a vibe here, kind of a love thing. And then... 
Winding up, Kurt and Tabitha then talk about the reconciliation with Courtney Love, and Tabitha is so messy. She talks about how Courtney had a problem with the way that Tabitha was criticizing Courtney on MTV, and then one minute later, she does the exact thing that Courtney accused her of doing. I don't know, Things I think were so crazy. <sighs> also, they were crazy earlier in the night before Madonna and Courtney came in, the train wreck. I don't think this reconciliation is gonna last long. Kurt and Tabitha then react to Michael Jackson's entrance to the awards, and Tabitha says this. I love, Mike, that, he, I love that he brought the cheering section with him. I yeah, lots of so cheering inspired. little boys. A short while ago, we spoke with Janet Jackson. Even Kurt is shocked. And that is the end of the 1995 Video Music Awards. What a hot mess. Now for those that have stuck around to the end, I am bringing out a bonus clip out of the vault of my 1998 VMA video that I'm totally not filming right now because I forgot to film it in the 1998 video. Here's the clip. We then get a performance by Brandy and Monica doing The Boy Is Mine, a killer hit, even more killer than the hit that Monica threw at Brandy right before this performance. Allegedly, right before the performance, Monica decked Brandy in the face. Before they could even get to the stage, Monica decked in the face, <laughs> popped in the face backstage. The reasons are unknown. We had a disagreement. We had a disagreement. <laughs> We, we had a disagreement. Mm. To make a long story short, Brandy and Monica had had this feud basically because they were compared and contrasted. They were both in the same industry. So when they collaborated on The Boy Is Mine, it was almost like putting and squashing those rumors about a feud to bed. But actually, there was an actual feud. With Brandy and Monica coming together for The Boy Is Mine, they didn't actually come together. They recorded their vocals separately, they never really collaborated, even on the music video, it wasn't like a key key, hey, we're doing a song, it's gonna be great. No, it wasn't any of that. Like, legitimately, they did not like each other. And for whatever reason, we do not know the reason why, right before the performance, Monica allegedly punched Brandy in the face, and then they both had to go out on the stage and perform and act like nothing was wrong. The one silver lining though is that the performance as well as the song is all about the girls feuding so this incident happening right before just made the performance feel a lot more real. Wow that bonus clip was really good I can't believe I chose to leave it out of the last one but there it is. Thank you guys so much for watching please leave a comment down below telling me which award show I should cover next. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!